So Stillwater Play to Con just came out wide release from Focus Features, and it's a classic Hollywood star vehicle starring Matt Damon. And perhaps this should have come out a little later in the year because this has awards um, aspirations, aspirations, particularly yeah. around uh, Matt Damon as a Best Actor candidate. And we already know the Focus is doing some like awards events for it, so they're kicking that off in earnest. Um, so that's starting soon. But uh, yeah, Stillwater. I, um, you know, going in, I was like, oh, that's exciting because this is a movie that was supposed to come out last year. We knew it was a Damon vehicle, fun to fun to see uh, in general, and also from Tom McCarthy, his first like big notable movie um, since Spotlight, of course, which you know he got many plots for, including Best Picture. Mm-hmm. So a, a lot of pedigree going in. And also, like, just, I think, things to like, like, this is a French co-production. This was shot in Marseille, so it's nice to look at. And uh, I like the movie a lot, honestly. Um, I think there's a lot of meta conversation to talk about this, but I think the movie itself, it's quite long. It's about two hours, 20 minutes. Probably could trim that down a bit, but just in general, the whole, like, gruff, roughneck, conservative American goes to foreign land to try and rescue his daughter like it's just like a really simple premise that we're familiar with but it's quite likable like there's shades of like taken once in a while there's shades of like noir elements to it and perhaps the fact that the movie doesn't commit to any one lane might be a detriment again given the runtime but i quite liked it you know the premise is that uh abigail breslin plays damon's character's uh bill baker his daughter and she's been in prison for five years already of a nine-year sentence for murdering her college roommate. She was uh, studying abroad in Marseille. And hmm, Damon sounds keeps, familiar. Yeah, and Damon keeps going overseas once in a while to go see her, you know, meet her, meet her in jail and, like, do her laundry and stuff and talk to her. And like, then the inciting incident, of course, is that when he goes to visit, like, any normal time, she gives him some, like, new evidence that might be able to prove her innocence. And then Damon decides to stick around Marseille and try and get that done. And like I said, there are moments where you like feel like it's going to go the taken route. There are moments where you think it's going to go like the noir investigative route. But what I was most struck with was the warmth of it because uh, Damon's character, Bill Baker, uh, befriends uh, a French local named uh, 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 Virginie played by Camille Cotin, who is the French actress who is the lead of the hit drama Call My Agent. He, hmm. he uh, befriends her and her young daughter, Maya, and she's a single mom, Bill's a single dad. They kind of have this kindred spirit. They become like this platonic family, and he starts to live with them and take care of, uh, help take care of the kid while he's sticking around trying to free his daughter. That stuff is really good, and you get really invested in that relationship. Uh, the little kid is like super cute, but like the da- dynamic between Damon and the kid, and that Damon and uh, Cotin is is really good, and like I love that honestly, and that's why I think the movies are really successful, and I quite like it. Like I said, it's a little long, but I would definitely recommend it, um, purely for I think the star vehicle na- nature of it, and like yeah, it's like not like sh- it's not like an amazingly like shot film. Like we're gonna talk about the Green Knight in a second, which is definitely one of those. Stillwater's pretty workmanlike, but you're still set in Marseille, like I said. So I think there's a lot of ingredients to like here, and you know, like the political nature of it. Um, Damon playing a character who's conservative in the modern times, and also very American has American identity. It doesn't fully commit to that sort of thing, but I kind of like what it did. So. I would recommend Stillwater, but it's been a bit of a talking point uh, since it came out due to its um, uh, similarities due to its uh, source material inspiration, as I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, as I mentioned, the the story of um, what happened happens with Allison sounds very familiar, and that's because um, pretty much is the Amanda Knox story, it sounds like, in premise. And that's that's the thing, right? So this past weekend, a Stillwater came out. Amanda Knox took to Twitter and kind of, you know, went on a uh, tweet thread about uh, how her story, which if you don't know the Amanda Knox story, she was convicted of murdering her roommate while she was studying abroad. Um, 
served four years of a 26 year sentence and then was exonerated. Um, and a, I forget, I'm forgetting the guy's name. I think it's like Jude or something like that. Yeah, some like local burglar was yeah. convicted. Uh, evident, DNA evidence uh, exonerated her and uh, Smalls was convicted. Um, but still, the when you when you hear the word the name Amanda Knox, it's associated with mm-hmm. killing her roommate. Unfortunately, yeah. and that that's wrong. You know, <laughs> that's that's not the story at all. Um, and so there, there's a lot of controversy around the commoditization and people benefiting off the story and retelling the story, especially because I think this was loosely based off of what a story from Variety. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going and. Uh, and you know, she's uh, Amanda Knox obviously is not receiving any money off this, but the person who wrote the story is, you know, benefiting from this. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's quite interesting, I think, because, um, you know, it's a gray area. People write stories and write yeah. adaptations of stories all the time, stealing from real life things that happen. Yeah. fictionalizing it's it the news right but at the same time uh, this is I, I i think anyone that's aware of the amanda knox situation it was a very public criminal trial um it would be hard to watch the water and not connect those dots so where, where do you stand in yeah the whole situation so i think an important thing to note is that Stillwater is focused on the dad it's not focused on the Amanda Knox stand-in. Abigail Breslin is a supporting character in the film, clearly. I think the, the biggest, I think like the best point that Amanda Knox makes is that McCarthy invoked like the, the Amanda Knox story, and I believe some of the press around the film also made that connection. Watching the movie, it's a very thoughtful war movie. I don't think it's exploitative at all. And I think her best points around to like maybe just don't like directly make the connection when it's about like a individual person because as she was saying which i think is another good point it's like when you call it the monica Lewinsky scandal you don't actually honor the power dynamics going on it's more important i think to call it the bill clinton affair and that's how amanda knox was saying when you invoke my name you're kind of still like you know using my negative reputation that's been proven to be false so i'm very sympathetic to that at the same time i think it's okay to adapt something like this without actually consulting with your like sourcing like this happens all the time it's going to keep happening and perhaps just don't openly invoke it when you're promoting the film and i think it would be totally okay because otherwise it's like yeah like this is like this this kind of thing is going to happen and again the movie i think the movie is very thoughtful and 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 warm and like i don't i don't i don't think like people like like but but it's complicated so i I, obviously you understand her point of view and why she thinks that way but like in terms of like i don't i don't think it's going to change like how the industry moves or anything yeah i don't i don't think it will either and i i think i do agree with her in the idea that you know if the story is so close to her situation that it then uh you know kind of misconstrues the way people understand the case it's really really unfair to her it's just a really tough situation because like like you said this is just the news being retold and it's a she's an unfortunate like player in all of this right really uh really awful circumstances that you know that came about for her and obviously feel for her she did uh offer to have matt damon and uh, the director on her podcast i think Mm -hmm. uh to talk it out and they both declined but i would like to uh, you know i find matt damon to be pretty thoughtful although you know a story about his daughter convincing him not to use the the f slur towards the lgbtq community as of just a couple months ago (laughs) he came out he's open in his his gaps which i yeah i I guess i find it endearing that he's like he's a 50 year old dude who knows that like he's not perfect yeah sometimes he says things that he doesn't need to say but i always have found that he seems to me more or less coming from the a good place but he's mm-hmm. certainly not perfect. I mean, he said some stupid shit when downsizing came out too. That it seems to be just what he does. Yeah. So I would like to hear him, you know, talk about it and just kind of like right. be thoughtful about it. But 
don't know. We'll see. Definitely an interesting aspect to it all. 